Hello everybody, welcome to my next video and in this one I'd like to show you how to easily implement USB as a serial interface for all your projects. So many times you need a serial interface. Why? Because it's very easy to use in the software side as well. I might do a later video how to use Python as an easy way to capture USB serial data and display it or do anything you want with it. And for this example, I'm using my STN32F407 processor, in this case on my discovery board, as it also has the USB micro USB connector already on it. So I'm going to show you how to create it from bare minimum. So even if you have just a processor, any processor that includes USB is fine. So let's just jump into our newly created project, go into connectivity and search down the USB OTG FS that stands for full speed. Go into that and you would like to enable the device only. So you'd like to have it in the device only setting. Everything else you can leave it as default. Then you'd like to go to the middleware when you need to install the USB device role. In this case, we want to have it as a virtual COM port. So let's select the communication device class as virtual COM port. You can leave everything here as default. If you really need to know what you're doing, you can change these settings as you need to. So as you can see, it's highlighted our pins that we need to use. So the last thing we need, well, we have a crystal on board for the processor speed. So let's go to RCC and enable the external uh, ceramic or crystal resonator. There's that. Go to our clock configuration to see if everything is all right. This is the main clock for the USB peripheral, 48 megahertz, so this is fine. And the core clock of 168, which is fine as well. As you might know, the application structure is advanced and the generate preferentialization as a pair of C and H files is also ticked, as I mentioned in our previous videos. So after our project has been compiled together, we can see that all of our core files like main and GPIO initialization are in their core subfolders and the USB ones are in middlewares in ST, USB device library, class and CDC. Here's for the serial interface and the core has the USB core drivers for the USB. Also under the USB device, you have other USB device code as well. So this is if you need to uh, use it, you have it under the middlewares folder. So, but if you look at our program, here we can see our GPI in it and our USB device in it that initializes our USB structure. And over here, I have already a small piece of code and I, let's explain what it does. So the first thing is that I declare an array consistent of hello world with a carriage return and a new line. Then I use this CDC transmit FS function that transmits a certain buffer and the size of this buffer over the serial so-called serial lines. And then I delay for a millisecond. So this should print hello world in our serial terminal. Also, in order to use this function, you must include this usbd underscore cdc underscore if dot h library. So after done that, we can compile. After compiling, you can launch your debug session. In my case, I have my ST link refreshed to JLink. So in my case, I'll launch my JLink utility. If in your case, if you have your stock ST flash firmware on it, then just launch that. If I go into my USB settings, I can see that there's nothing really much over here. It's just my debugger in this case, my and other peripherals for my computer. But now if I run this code, now if I run my LSUSB command again, we can see that there's another device. It's called ST Electronics ST32 F407. This is the default name, but you can change the, the configuration. So let's check which port it has. So what this command will do, it will extract every, every ACM device from the device list. And in my case, there's the ACM1 and the ACM0. The 0 is the default one, is the first one that has been connected. And this is the virtual COM port from the debugger. 
and the async one can only be the second one, which is the one that we have created. So let's check it out. So I'm using putty and using ACM1 at baud rate of 9600 and let's open it up. As you can see, apart from the first string in the corrupted buffer, every other one works as well. It does do the new line and the carriage return as well and hello world is printed without a problem. So as you can see, our serial terminal works. And the best thing of all, this is very simple to implement. Let me show why. So if I take a trip to the schematic pack for this development board, we are on the USB OTG full speed sheet and here's our USB connector for our board. And we can see that it has just a bit of EMI protection with the corresponding resistors. We have drive for external power. So if you want to be the master instead of the device and here the pins are going to directly PA12 and PA11 and also the PN10 if you're using the ID pin as well. So as you can see, these pins go directly to the microcontroller, so nothing else. Oh, if only you need to use is the external resistors and maybe some EMI protection, and that's that. Everything else is handled by the processor. So you can see this is much simpler and cheaper and easier to implement than using an additional RS-232 or some kind of USB to serial converter IC as well. So this is a suitable way to use the USB peripheral inside the processor if you have one. Or this can be another parameter to look for in a processor for your next project. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video.